Okay, so as you know, I'm going to look at a lot of research that's come out on the impact of steroids on the brain. <clears throat> but initially, what I thought I'd do is just go through the groundwork of basically how hormones work within the brain and and what we know about the basic function and impact of drugs as it stands before I get into this new research. Now, all our sex hormones, so that's testosterone, estrogen and progesterone, can cross the blood-brain barrier, or the BBB. Uh, but out of these, it works basically in reverse of their binding affinity to SHBG. So, test binds with SHBG very readily. Estrogen not so much, and progesterone doesn't bind at all. So, as a result, progesterone crosses the barrier most easily. Secondly is estrogen, and finally is test. And, and basically, that's because it's bound with SHBG. Test, free-floating tests will cross quite easily. But once it's bound to SHBG, it doesn't cross the barrier so well. Uh, if it's bound with albumin then it will cross the barrier. So the restriction of how much of the hormone crosses into the brain is based on how much of it is bound with SHBG via the volume that's injected at that time. I've made notes because this is complex. Now we know that steroids affect levels of brain amino acids and changes in these amino acids within the brain change the, the metabolic rate of the brain, so the way to which the brain operates. Now, we, we also know that, that sex hormones, as in steroids, have a massive impact on the central nervous system through development, so through uh, natal, uh, natal stages, prenatal stages. But we don't really know too much about its impact in maturity, um, we know it can cause fatigue, um, but but beyond that, at the moment, from what I'm finding, there isn't much beyond that. We know that heavy metal contamination within UGL steroids has a negative impact on the central nervous system, and we know there's some upregulation of how the central nervous system works through steroid use. Now. The increase in steroids within the brain will cause an increase in steroid receptor density, activity, and distribution. So basically, the more steroid we have entering the brain, then the higher level of receptors we develop, and they're more densely packed together, and they activate more intensely. Now, these receptor changes can affect DNA expression. So basically, they can affect the signals that are released by our DNA. And it's this process that makes me think that there could be some paternal transferation from a father using steroids into their children via the way DNA in the sperm expresses certain traits. And we also know it changes the messenger RNA. Now, the problem with all this is it's complex and there's so many interacting processes uh, and, and secondary processes and influencer processes that at the moment it's not fully understand how. What we've seen is when these hormones are raised, we've seen an effect in, in messaging and DNA, but we don't know the mechanisms as to why and we don't know what other influencing factors change that or affect that um, we also know that a change in steroid receptors can impact gray matter levels in the brain uh, as well as mood and anxiety disorders there's there's a def defined link between elevations of neurochemicals or neurosteroids in, in mood and anxiety disorders um, in fact estrogens have been shown to increase serotonin and the release of acetylcholine which both have an impact on mood and cognitive function uh, serotonin on mood and acetylcholine on cognitive function so basically how intelligent we are 
Uh, we've also know that an increase in neuro. Oh bollocks! This is one of these I can't say. Neuro pinetrine. I think that's right. Uh, turnover affects our attention levels, and these are all changed by increases in um, steroid receptor density within the brain. We also know there's an impact on the D1 receptor, which can cause an increase in um, obsessive and addictive behavior, so OCD type behaviors. Um, we also know, I mean, I touched on this previously, uh, quite a few videos about that, that there can be an impact on cannabinoid receptors and therefore the use of other drugs with steroids, their impact can be minimalized, causing an increase in that drug use. When we start looking at progesterone, the, the, the processes are even more complex uh, and it's probably out of the three sex steroids, so progesterone, estrogen uh, and testosterone, that we, we know the least about. Um, we know estrogens can have a quite a positive impact in the brain. Um, so we know that, that so they can increase mood, they can increase cognitive function, and they can increase tension. And we know that progesterone combined with estrogen can also add to this. But we've also seen that progesterone activation in the absence of estrogen can have a very negative effect. Now, this is thought to, to be due to its binding with the GABA receptors. Um, and this is potentially one of the actions of Trembolone and Nandrolones because they act like progesterone. They're not true progestins, but they do act in that manner and they combine with progesterone receptors. So it, it's thought that the negative impact that they have on certain mechanisms within the brain is due to this binding affinity with a progesterone receptor. Uh, and um, a magnification of progesterone's action within the brain, singularly. Um, I mean, it's fair to say that a lot of these mechanisms we don't fully understand. We, we know that changes occur when these levels are increased, and we know some of the routes at which that happens, or, or some of the areas which are affected, but we just don't know fully what's going on. What we have seen is that in neuropsychiatric conditions, uh, so a lot of mental health disorders, there are elevated levels of certain hormones. And um, we, we know that uh, one of the effects of increased receptor volume is a change in the, the, the cellular death rate all cells in our bodies die and are renewed and this is a controlled process uh, but uh, increasing steroid receptors in the brain changes this uh, and obviously as i've already said changes in dna expression in fact high testosterone is associated with ODC, uh, ocd and tourette's disorders it doesn't look like high testosterone causes these it looks more like these conditions are alongside or cause high testosterone levels and high estrogen has been seen within schizophrenia. In increases in tests in females are shown to reduce empathy and social co uh, cognition, which, which basically means it's the way we remember social events and remember people, the way we store information about how we felt, our moods, as, as sensations, when we have social engagement. Um, so um, we can see changes uh, the way things work there and when this information is stored don't go anywhere you I'll be done in a minute sorry the wife's just popped in or popped out maybe um, but we've also seen where there's an increase in estrogen we've seen improved memory and improved spatial awareness and estrogens have shown to increase the connectivity between neurons. So basically our brains work better. Uh, and yet it's ironic that as bodybuilders uh, and steroid users, we continue to try and keep estrogen low. Um, so, you know, these drugs have a massive impact on the way our brains work, um, both 
massively in the way they develop. In fact, you know, levels, changes in these levels are shown to really very much change the shape and the way our brain develops it in, in through childhood uh, and within the womb. So it's not impossible to look at the fact that they may continue to change brain structure post-maturity. Definitely remember as well that the brain's not fully matured to around the age of 24, 25. So there's a strong chance that, that usage before these times will malform the brain and change structure within the brain. So that's roughly where we are and, and some sort of indication of how these hormones affect the way we behave. They have an impact on our, our, our memories, our, our way we store memories, the way we, we deal and process emotion, uh, our, our obsessiveness, our fears. All these sort of things are all controlled by neurostimulants within the brain or neuro, neurosteroids. And obviously the drugs we use get in there and mix about with that. Um, it's quite ironic that, that we spend so much time trying to keep estrogen low, and yet estrogen generally is quite a positive influence within the brain. Um, but hey-ho. So that's just a brief sort of overview of, of how brain chemistry works and its impacts. So I'm going to get into the next videos a bit more on, on the effects of cycling and the effects of increasing the levels of these drugs within our brain. Okay, so I'll speak to you guys soon.